very welcome back. Now, more than 28,000 people have signed a petition to the Irish government to lift COVID-19 restrictions on maternity care. As it stands, the father is only allowed to attend a maternity hospital if his partner is in active labour, with mothers attending their, own appoint their appointments on their own. Joining us are Sinn Féin TD, Rada Cronin, who raised the issue in the Dáil this week, along with our very own Suzanne Cain, who is now 26 weeks pregnant on her third child. A very good morning to you both. Good morning, ladies. Thank good to see you. Thank you for you. joining us. Uh, Susie, a very familiar face to our own audience, and we'll, we'll get to you in a moment, yeah. uh, Susie. But, Rada, you might explain to us uh, what the situation is. For anyone joining this today, because obviously you want lots of signatures on this petition, mm -hmm. What is the situation and is it on a hospital by hospital basis? Yes, yes, the situation very much depends on the hospital. There is no um, you know, def defined um, protocol per, per maternity hospital across the state. So um, this came to my attention last week. Um, somebody in Clane, Colin in Clane, contacted me. His wife is due her baby in the next couple of months and he's not going to be, he hasn't been able to attend any of the scans and he won't be able to attend the labour until the mammy is in active labour. And really and truly, I was talking to Suzanne earlier and, you know, it's when the labour, the labour pa <clears throat> pains are going on that you really need that company, that you have that familiar face, uh, that person who loves you, you know, more than anything else in the world, <clears throat> they're with you. Um, and Because once active labour happens, you know, and you know as well, you know, you're, you're, you're there, you, know, you don't care who's around you, you're in the process of having your baby. And I just said, you know, there's been so much talk about reopening the pubs and the wet pubs and the dry pubs this, um, the, for the last few weeks. I just said, you know, it seems to be more important to wet the baby's head than to be there to be present for your, your baby's head um, emerging into this. But it's also world. right, as, as, as we spoke to Susanna about it, previously but it's also not just on the day of the birth it's all the appointments oh, yeah. it's the big scan mm -hmm. you know and and god forbid if there's any news that you didn't want to hear you're facing that on your own yeah absolutely i suppose for me i'm really lucky okay like i'm on baby number three <clears throat> i've gone to the coom the whole way along i know how incredible the staff are in the coom the midwives there are amazing my consultant is absolutely amazing i literally trust her with my life so i've been really fortunate but i had my early scans because as we spoke about before in december i lost a baby so it was the same gynecologist that i went to but that i was lucky enough when I was seven weeks pregnant, I could ring her secretary and go, look, I've just found out I'm pregnant. We're in lockdown. Is there any chance I could see Dr. Anglum? And she took me in and scanned me, but she scanned me by myself. Now, that's terrifying when you're going and coming off the back of a miscarriage mm. um, and not having Joey there. In December, when I had to go for surgery, after I lost the baby um, with Dr. Anglum, when I came back from surgery, Joey was sitting in the room. I didn't realise how much I needed him in that room until I was there because mm. we were both heartbroken. You know, we both lost our baby. Um, so I, I think I'm very lucky in the terms that I know the coom, I know how incredible the midwives are, I know how incredible that the consultants are, I know the route, I know where I go into admissions, yeah. I know what the labour ward looks like. But I'm not a first time mam. And a first time mam, that's a very, very daunting place to be, to be going to those scans alone. And look, I think every woman who's pregnant across the country is the same. We all want the footfalls to stay very, very low in the hospital. We're not talking about 27 people around a bed here. We're looking at just having your person, being able to go even to your big scan with your person, whatever your journey's been on to get that baby, that you have your person, whoever that is, and you have a choice to have that person with you. But at the moment, that isn't available to us. And also, we want to keep our medical staff as safe as possible. You know, let's look at a year ago, our midwives were out picketing because of, you know, mm -hmm. their work and their conditions. And I respect everything that they do. So I want to keep my midwife and the hospital staff as safe as possible. But we wonder, you know, can it be talked about more, that we can look at something, that we can all work together, that women have a choice. Is there a disregard for the man in this situation? You've gone through four babies mm -hmm. being born. Uh, have the government, Rada, overlooked the fact that there's two people on this journey? That's right. That's Your partner, saying. be it yeah. male or female. Yes, and especially for a first birth. Um, you know, it's not just, you know, a, a child is born, a family is born, um, and it's important that the, that the daddy is there as well. Or, you know, um, in the case of a single parent, you know, a, a 
the mother or a best friend, but just that, you know, the mother has that, has that friendly face, that familiar face with her. <coughs> but, you know, I think that we're seven months, we're into our seven months now since COVID struck Ireland and we're, we're weighing things up. And it doesn't just add up because I have been in um, discussions with the Minister for Health over the last few weeks. About six weeks ago, I heard that in NACE General Hospital, they're not testing staff regularly. And we saw the debacle there with the meat factories. Um, you know, that they, they stopped the testing of the meat factory workers there. And then they said, oh, no, 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 we're going to start again next week. Um, and if they were serious about keeping COVID out of the hospitals, it's not just if daddy is allowed in for the, for the actual birth, why can't he be allowed in mm. for the for the labour as well? <clears throat> because um, and if they're serious about keeping COVID out, they should be testing the healthcare workers as well. Mm -hmm. We all want to. Err. I was out in the pits there as well with the yeah. with the midwives last year. And you know, if they're serious about bring, keeping COVID out of the hospitals, test the people who are important. Test the healthcare workers because a healthcare worker um, could be bringing it into the hospital as well as the, your birth partner. Exactly. So um, from it doesn't a, add up. From a dad's point of view, from a father's point of view, uh, you know, I can sympathise with Joey uh, because we are utterly useless when it comes to the birth. There is nothing we can do. But what we can do as, a, and I'm not just talking about the dads, but your person. Your person, yeah. that's we what I can, say, your person. We can help you in terms of, we can go and park the car, we can, you know, <laughs> that's, but that's, and that's how we feel we're helping. You know, I can drop you at the door and I go, and, you know, make sure you get in there safely, I'll meet you in the ward, you know. That's where we feel we, it, that, that's taken away from us. And, and I, we're doing absolutely nothing. I know with the coom, just to say, because I know there's, <clears> so, like, same for me, and it was only that when I, like, I spoke and, and found out exactly what the protocol was in the coom. So not to scare pregnant women this morning either. It's that, look, you'll go, if you're in labour and you're in active labour and you're in your room, your person <clears> is with you in yeah. that room. You're going to labour together. So, you know, don't panic. And then the three days after that, that you're in hospital, they can come in, you're, that the person, whoever that is, can come in for those three days. What we're talking about is that if you're going for a scan, you are going want to go to the EPU. The EPU is a very scary place, which is the early pregnancy mm -hmm. unit. If you were there, you were there for a reason. You mm -hmm. could really do with a support of somebody going in there. We'd like that to be looked at. Or the option, we're not talking about every single appointment or everybody coming in to visit, just to have that option that you have your person with you, whoever that is, mm -hmm. for that support while you're, you're on this journey. So do we have a response from Minister Stephen Donnelly, the Health Minister, on this petition? Do we have a reaction from him? Minister Butler took the took the topical issues in the doll um, this week, and I did. I ran out after her as well to just to press press the point to her. And you know we, they have to relook at this. Um, everything else has been has been looked at and revisited. And um, we have this new protocol coming out now for living with COVID, and I really have stressed to them that I really want this looked at. Um, it was a friend of mine had became a grandfather yesterday. It was too late for his for his daughter and her husband. And let's make sure now that it's in place for Suzanne. Mm -hmm. So your call to action this morning is to get, is to get people to come on and sign the petition, yeah, Susie. It would be, Where can they find it, first of all? So, like, you could just go online, you'll see it. Like News Talk, I've put it up yesterday. You'll find it, literally, if you put, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, everything is up there for you to, to put it. We can put it on the screen as well. But you know what? It's like, I know when, you're in, you know when you're in a boat and it's your boat, right? And you're staying along and you think it's all encompassing because you're in your boat. And I get it. I get that some people will go, oh, for God's sake, go on, get on with it. To be soft now, just have your baby. But... You know, let's go back to that we're all in this together because the one thing that we need at the moment is a little bit of hope and we mm -hmm. need a little bit of happiness. And a baby coming into the world, like, there's nothing like no. it. It is the mm -hmm. happiest time ever. And I think we all need a little bit of that. So let's right. make it as happy for those people that are going into that maternity hospital. And to say, like, the maternity hospitals are stretched and they're under mad pressure. So it's not particularly down to them. It's the directive that's coming down to them. And you know, the guidelines they, yeah, that need doing, to change. Yeah, they really are doing their best for women. And, you know, for women not to be stressed or anxious either, you know? So there is nothing as hopeful as new birth. And um, you know, we do need... Absolutely, a bit but of hope we have to be honest the, and say there are internet. women facing terrible disappointments yeah. what, uh, quite, on their yeah. own in yeah. maternity hospitals around the country as we see. And we here. need to protect our most vulnerable. And that's what they are. And right they now. need somebody yeah. there with them when they're, get, when they're Absolutely. receiving bad news. That's Thanks for yeah. joining us, ladies. Thank you. No Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have lots more this. to come here on Ireland AM. Join us after the break.